This week we're going to talk about Gavin Newsom and his new concept of virtue signaling. We'll explain what it is and break down just how ludicrous and what an idiot he is being. And just what kind of idiot he's being. <laughs> an idiot indeed, Rick. Um, so yeah, I mean, he, he seems to think that he can look at something on the federal stage that he doesn't like in the Texas abortion uh, uh, lawsuit that ended up getting to the Supreme Court and says, hey, I don't like the way that this went, so I'm going to try to do the exact same thing in California for a completely different agenda that I have, that being he wants to make it law for people to be able to sue uh, firearms manufacturers. So if we could have you put that up on the screen for us, Jacob, and you're going to be able to see the actual statement that came from the governor. In that statement, it's doing exactly what you said. He's upset with something that has absolutely nothing to do with firearms ownership. Um, you know, whether you believe or don't believe in what Texas has done, that's not an enumerated right within the Bill of Rights. Yet, the Second Amendment, wait, is the second right under the Bill of Rights. Right. And I mean, yeah, just to dr draw the, the crevice even larger, you know, you talk about uh, the way that the Supreme Court is supposed to function, um, the way that they set precedent, the way that they don't typically create a supreme law of the land like they did with Roe v. Wade. I mean, that's neither here nor there, but he's completely misconstruing something that's happening in another part of the country. I mean, we don't look at laws that they put in place in Venezuela and say, I don't like what they did here, so now I'm going to impose similar tyranny on California. That's just something that's never really been done, and, and it breaks down to the agenda, right? Right, and, and let's, let's look at a couple of things here, breaking it down. So first off, many of you sit a, across a wide span of the political spectrum. The Second Amendment clearly is, does not belong to just one party or one ideology. It belongs to all of us who are Americans. And one of the issues with that is Gavin Newsom has continually tried to make this like a a idea and concept that only belongs to the far right, which that's not the case. It belongs to everybody. But moreover, you and I both talk to people all the time, as do a lot of our fellow Second Amendment advocates out there from different organizations. And one of the things that all of us have in common is talking to the average person and trying to explain that this governor really truly is a gun grabber. And I think this is like him coming out because a, nothing happened on, on December 11th that was tragic to say, oh, I'm doing this in response to that. So because he wants to come for your guns, he picks something completely irrelevant and says, oh, because of this irrelevant thing, I'm going to signal that my virtue is to, to take guns from everybody, and here I come. Yeah, and it's, it's clear, this is clearly somebody who you know, has been drinking from the Powerade a little bit too long, and he's probably frustrated that you know, a part of his generalized agenda is being shot down somewhere else. So he needs to press forward uh, here. And I think that you made a great point here. You know, this is something that we always say when we're in tight knit groups, but we never, uh, well, I don't want to say never, but we far less often say it as a broadcast. But yeah, this second amendment that we have in this country does not only belong to a specific group of people. We here are fighting for everybody's Second Amendment right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's been made extremely clear over the last two years when we've seen over a million new firearms owners in California, the mass majority of them identifying not with the Republican Party or the right side of the political spectrum, but elsewhere. So I, I think it's very clear that it is for everybody, but... I think it's also important here, let's break down what he's actually attacking. So first, and, and you can see it up there on the screen, uh, he is attacking assault weapons. Mm -hmm. And second, he is attacking ghost guns. And what he is seemingly going to be talking with his legislators about is to create laws that would allow anybody, not somebody who's been hurt by a ghost gun or even hurt by a firearm, but anybody can bring forward a lawsuit up to $10,000 for any firearms manufacturer simply because they don't like what's going on. 
And let's look at what this really is. So, you know, initially when everybody saw this announcement, and if this is the first time you're seeing the announcement, your gut instinct is like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, we haven't even got to January 1st to the start of the new legislative season, and he's already coming after us. Slow down. He's already failed. And I want that to really sit in. He's already failed because here's just some of the fun things that he's going to do to all of us. Number one, this has nothing to do with firearms as much as it does for him to, quote, create a political soundbite for the moment and to raise money for his reelection. Right. So we're, we're, we're spanning back a little bit. We're looking at the larger picture. And this is where, you know, that buzz term uh, virtue signaling comes into play because what is happening next year? 2022 is an election year. What is going to happen when legislation is proposed of this nature? It's going to give everybody in California the understanding that Gavin Newsom is taking a hard stance on the firearms issue, even though all of us who live within this community realize how ridiculous it really is. Right. But what it's also going to do is it's going to give some uh, legislators who are up for re-election next year an opportunity to do the same thing. So yeah, I mean, th this is more of uh, a virtue signal than it really is a proposition to create change in California. The only unfortunate thing, Rick, is that they're still going to use our taxpayer money to do it. Correct. I think that's what ends up getting me the most. And, and part of what's going to happen too, and why I say it's going to fail utterly, is because if you were to compare this to the Texas abortion law that he's trying to marry it to, we've already seen that the lower court said, oh, wait, that's unconstitutional. You know what? That's the same thing we're going to get in the lower courts in California. They're going to tell them right out the bank, especially with the recent Supreme Court decision that wasn't as much about abortion as it was about process. And they said in that decision, which, by the way, was an eight to one decision, like practically unanimous, <laughs> that to do this kind of game where you allow these private litigation things to make, yeah, you can't do that. It's unconstitutional. So what we have is a governor who says he's politically and legally astute, directing the legislator, directing the attorney general that are paid with taxpayers' money to do something right out of the blocks that was just declared unconstitutional. Yeah, and I, and I mean, this is again where the sad part comes in because uh, with a supermajority in California legislature, you probably will see this become a law. And once you see it become a law, it's going to inevitably get a lawsuit, which is going to have to be taken to the courts. And then you're mm -hmm. going to have people within our community bringing a lawsuit against this law that is being that they're paying for it on both sides. OK, the attorney general of California does not operate for free. Correct. OK, he gets paid by California taxpayer dollars. That means that firearms owners who end up um, uh, who end up donating to lawsuits like like CRPA lawsuits are also putting their tax money to fight against that lawsuit that they want. Uh, this is why coming into 2022, we need to look at this stuff for what it is. It is a clear virtue signal. It is a way to buy votes. Uh, for leftist uh, politicians in 2022, and we need to get these people out because without that supermajority, they're not going to be able to pass silly stuff like this. I also think another part of this that's really interesting and in breaking it down is the role of the federal government. You know, we saw the Biden administration on the Texas abortion law step in to try to push an agenda. Now, what's interesting is you got Governor Newsom, a Democrat, who obviously did not consult with the Biden administration and said, oh, I had this really, this really cool idea. I'm going to do this thing that you got to think if you're the U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland, he's like, you just made me and positioned me in the worst possible position because he's been tasked with the Biden administration of going after firearms owners, but he's been put in a position by the California governor that he can't because if he does it, He's going to be unconstitutional. I mean, it's just like this political quagmire that's being set up. That's even going to. I mean, I'm sure there's people in Joe Biden's White House this morning going, "Why, for the love of God, why did you do this to us?" But this is what happens when you build your political agenda to pander to a small group of people. 
I mean, at the end of the day, we, we hear terms like get woke, go broke all the time. Um, and, and it all circulates around the exact same thing. There is a small group of people that scream very loudly that politicians are scared of. And when you're scared of somebody, uh, you're going to pander to them. And that essentially is what this message does. You know, there is one great political defeat that the leftist agenda consistently uh, takes on. And that is, and I'm talking about at the federal no. level, and that is the argument of firearms. Firearms are ingrained into the American culture. Mm -hmm. There's no way around that. And when you have a small group of people that are being pandered to by a lot of politicians, these things end up getting muddy really quick. And you do see it here because they've just put themselves in a not winnable situation. Yeah, and I think we have to look at what when you're saying ingrained in culture. I mean, you can look at any science fiction, you know, from Star Trek to Star Wars and all the stuff in between, which is supposedly forecasting what we today want to see in the future. Ironically, there's a lot of pew pew guns going off in all those shows. So yeah. obviously firearms are in the future, according to Hollywood. So it's it's all the irony of, you know, they say one thing, they do something else, they make money off of the industry that they say they hate. It and I think people just need to realize enough of hiring employees, which is what politicians are, that are two faced and are lying and are not serving you. Right. It's, it's just more evidence for uh, the same argument. This isn't actually about firearms. At the end of the day, Gavin Newsom is going to continue to want to be protected by security yeah. with firearms. Right. So let's let's not make any mistakes about it here. This is about buying votes for next year and and the people that he wants to continue and be legislators. So this is our opportunity to call him out on it and not just call him out on it, but get the right people into Sacramento. And I think the final thing that I think we, we have to break down for each of you out there is the timing. We're in the holidays and any of us watching the local news or national news, because it's the same news, realizes that places like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and towns in between have become war zones. You know, opportunistic buying is called looting. We all know it. Um, you know, rape is rape, aggravated assault is aggravated assault, murder is murder, they're all up. There are cities that haven't had any of those things happen for a few years that are now reporting they've had two or three just in the last couple of months. Why? Because the failed policies of district attorneys led by money from Soros, led by money from Bloomberg, backing Newsom, that has actually aided and abated criminal behavior while suppressing law enforcement and the public safety. And that's why we've seen so many firearms purchases increase in California because people across the political spectrum are like, this is out of control. And unfortunately, we can't fire these people until June and November. But come June and November, realize a lot of us are gonna be together as one because I think we all feel less safe than we did a couple of years ago. And we need to remember, Newsom said to all of us, you should be voting for your own safety. Our own safety means we have to get rid of him and all of his cronies so we can have law and order again. Yeah, and I think that that can start with us just screaming louder. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, this is always, I've always been baffled by this. You know, you have these uh, gun control measures that come out. They're not really measurable. OK, you know, the, the thing here is taking assault weapons off the streets is going to save lives. Can you show me the lives that are saved by taking those firearms off the streets? You can't actually do that. What you can be shown, though, is the 800,000 to 3 million on average defensive handgun usages uh, to stop crime every single year. Um, these are things that are actually tangible. Right. So I, I, I have never really understood how this argument has taken such a stronghold uh, within the community. And maybe it does come down to uh, the firearms community is just not shouting loud enough. But I can tell you this, um, some CRPA programs this last year got some stuff done. And yeah. coming into the next year, we are going to be looking to push that envelope even further. So uh, I, I can tell you, if you're looking to get involved, uh, check out the CRPA website, look into CRPA chapters, because that is a great way to make your voice heard. 
and watch the breakdown, refer the breakdown to all your friends where we give you talking points every week so you can break this down to your family, your coworkers, and your neighbors so we can get the silent majority to be the vocal majority. You know, there's lots of positives and negatives in the California legislature, but you know what's always positive? A like on this video. So be sure and like, share, and subscribe. Make sure and hit that little bell uh, so that you can stay tuned for all of our future videos. You can also check us out on Facebook and at crpa.org. If you're looking for up-to-date legislature notes and things that are going on in the courts, the website and these videos are a great place to find it. So be sure and follow us, and we'll see you next time.